The Dairy School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pioneer, a seed brand of Corteva AgriScience. Bernard Tobin here at the uh, Western Canadian Dairy Seminar in Red Deer, Alberta, joined now by uh, David Renault from the uh, University of Guelph. Hi, David. How's it going? Good. How about you? Well, I'm pretty good. It's snowy outside, but yeah. hey, it's winter in Canada. <laughs> yeah, always, <laughs> always is. <laughs> always is. Hey, you just finished your presentation on uh, you know calf health, uh, calf management, and um, you know we lose a lot of calves, and uh, we're always trying to do better there. Just wanted to get some thoughts on you about uh, you know how we can do better and. You started your presentation with some statistics, you know, how many calves we're losing um, pre-weaning in, in, that, in, in that area. Um, how many are we losing? Are we losing too many? Yeah, so, so if you look at the, at the research, uh, we're losing about, uh, about 8% of calves are at birth in the first 48 hours, so either born dead or die within the first 48 hours. And then if you look at the recent National Dairy Study, about 6% of calves die in the pre-wean period, so in the first 60 days, and about 3% die uh, post-weaning, so in the, you know, from fir the first 60 days all the way up to calving. So we lose a pretty significant number of calves. And I think, I think if you look from an efficiency standpoint, I think there's lots that can be done to hopefully reduce that number and improve our efficiency and, and have more replacements available for, uh, for dairy producers. Now the first thing on your list, you know, that first sort of tip or recommendation for, for uh, producers is, is really about um, calving management and, you know, reducing calving difficulty. Yeah. Yeah, so anytime you can reduce some calving, calving difficulty, you can go a long way into reducing the levels of stillborns that you have right away. So, you know, f focusing on calving management, ensuring that you're, you have good monitoring of, of uh, the calving process, making sure that uh, you don't have overconditioning of cows, and finally making sure that your first lactation animals are grown big enough so that they don't have uh, difficult calving can, can really reduce that level on, on, on your dairy farm. You also talked about colostrum and, uh, you know, everything from timing to quality and quantity. Yep. Yeah, so colostrum management is probably the biggest thing that you can do really to reduce that level of disease and reduce the level of uh, pre weaning mortality. So, yeah, focusing on, on good, good uh, quality colostrum being going into the calf, so testing that colostrum with a Brick's refractometer, uh, making sure that you're feeding that calf quickly, ideally, you know, at birth or within the first two hours, and also feeding enough colostrum can go a long way. And one of the things that I think is, is often forgotten when you look at colostrum management is that cleanliness part. So making sure that you, you don't have a lot of bacteria in your milk uh, or in your colostrum can help, can help really improve the levels of, uh, of success of passive transfer for those yeah. young animals. Um, another thing you talked about, um, you know, managing umbilical uh, infections, you know, yeah. that's so, it's so important. So yeah, so umbilical infections, they're, they're quite common and I think they're one of those um, underdiagnosed uh, disease conditions that we have on dairy farms. So I think, you know, going through and, and really managing, having a clean calving area, making sure that they're moving into clean housing can go a long way in preventing umbilical infections, as can cl um, colostrum management and making sure you're feeding, you know, enough colostrum, doing it quickly and, and minimizing level of contamination of that colostrum. Um. Managing that cow, managing you know that, that that cow in the maternity pen is also a key, right? Um, yeah. you, you've got to have clean conditions there. Yeah, like I think that's the, really the biggest factor. I think, I think y y when you think about the umbilicus, it's a really vascular structure. I mean, there's lots of blood flow going to it, and when they're born into a contaminated area, and you have lots of blood flow going to there, and if you have a little bit of bacteria, that can lead to some big issues. So making sure that the calving area is clean as possible can help not only for managing umbilical infections, but also for managing uh, you know, Yoni's disease and, and other, uh, other transmissible diseases from the cow to the calf. Um, David, what role does nutrition play here? I mean, obviously in protecting against disease and getting that calf started? Yeah, I think nutrition is, is really a, a big factor. Um, if you look at a lot of the research that's been done where we move from you know, tr traditional levels of milk, which is about four liters of milk a day, and move to higher volumes, you know, eight, 10, 12 liters of milk, there's lots of research showing that it improves health, but it also improves their productivity, improves their growth, and also improves their efficiency. So I think there's lots to be said about you know, focusing on improving nutritional management to really improve the efficiency of your farm and the, and the rearing of your calves. Mm. And the last thing um, I thought was interesting from the discussion today was um, working with your veterinarians. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, we spend a lot of time with our vets, but they don't spend a lot of time working with our calves. That's, that's an untapped resource for us, right? Yeah, I think it's a huge untapped resource. I think. I think vets can offer a lot of value um, for the dairy producers when they focus on the calves. And in, a, you know, in the Healthy Calf Conference, which is a conference held in Ontario, um, we asked producers how often their vet really you know, asks about the calves when they're on the dairy farm. 
and and you know some some vets always do um, you know most vets sometimes do but there's lots of vets that are seldomly or never asking about the about health um, of the calves when on the farm so I think trying to engage the veterinarian and or having the vet start looking at the calves can go a long way to improving the the health and, and ultimately the welfare of the calves on the farm.